in this demonstration I'll show how to use the selection control structure or uh, more commonly known as if statements in programming so the first thing you have to do is create a new project or a Java project under Eclipse because that's what we are using in this series of uh, demonstrations so I will call it um, if demo keep it short say finish and I will add a new class I'm showing these uh, early steps also because most people are new at this stage so you right click on source say new and add a class so the class name we'll call it if demo again these are not the best names for object oriented classes uh, but we are just showing abstract concepts remember to click public static void main saves you the trouble of typing a few things and I also didn't add a package name that's because that's not the focus of this exercise so I'm going to remove this comment because I personally don't like to keep it there but there you can leave it so uh, what is an if statement an if statement allows you to perform um, instructions or statements um, in a way that is different to going from top to bottom so that's why it's also called selection you can selectively do things so let's try to compare two variables let's say I have a, a, an integer called num1 and I create another integer called num2 and uh, I might assign a value called uh, let, let's say put a uh, value 4 into num1 and num2 I want to put value 7 so the next thing I want to do is I want to um, print out which value is um, larger so now this sort of thing you can't do uh, without selection or if statements so how does an if statement work uh, fairly straightforward you say if and then you put the question or the check that you're performing um, inside brackets of the if statement so that is the condition so we say if the num if num1 is uh, greater than num2 so you can see I hit enter and I can open and close brackets like this so now um, I should put this open bracket on the same line as the previous line because that's how I have done it or this is how Eclipse is set up to do it um, you can put it on the next line but in that case you have to make sure all open uh, curly braces are on the, the line below little detail anyway so if num1 is greater than num2 then I can simply say system.out and it's looking things up for me again but um, I know exactly what I'm typing so to create a print, uh, to print something out you say system.out dot we don't need this okay system.out dot print and there we go so print ln and we can say uh, num1 is larger okay and we can then check if num2 is greater than num1 and so remember to close the bracket so uh, the other check I want to perform is if it's the other way around if num2 is greater than num1 I of course print num2 is larger alright so now these two are not connected these two if statements are not connected in any way the things you have to remember uh, you have to have this open bracket and you have to have this closed bracket what that means is if this is true only what's inside the body of the if statement will be uh, performed or uh, executed now uh, those those of you who, who are familiar with Java might say okay you don't need the curly brackets because you only have one statement that's right we're not going to go into those details right now just want to show um, how to get something running alright so let's run this and it says we'll say okay and doing its thing and um, we don't get an output oh well now we get an output all right eventually all right so num2 is larger and that is expected because 7 is larger than 4 now that is um, if you're having a sequence of if statements now we can also check to see if uh, they are equal so I can say if num2 is equal to num1 
we can say uh, num1 equals num2. So this is a pretty boring program a as it is right now because it's always 4 and 7 and if we want to check other numbers we have to enter things and recompile and do all those things. So now if I just to demonstrate if I make these two things equal uh, if I put 3 and 3 for both num1 and num2 um, it'll say num1 equals num2 and if you put, make num1 larger uh, it will also say uh, num1 is larger so it's, it's working fine so what happens is only um, whatever uh, that's true whatever question that is true it, uh, is so the code under that if statement is performed the other ones are checked so if num1 is greater than num2 like it is in the case right now 6 is larger than 3 then it will say num1 is larger then it will check is num2 greater than num1 because it can't be both at the same time this is not done um, and it will check num2 is num2 the same as num1 and uh, it won't do this because it's not so um, let's uh, make this a tiny bit more interesting by incorporating user inputs so I will say import java.util.star that was an, an, a demonstration on how to set up a scanner to get some user inputs so I will create a scan object called scan new scanner system.in so have a look at that other demonstration if you're not familiar with scanner or creating a scanner object in the other demonstration we call this keyboard but I said this can be called anything it's just the name of an object alright so let's say system.out.print um, enter a value for um, num1 and leave it like that and then instead of putting 6 in there we will say keyboard.next int because we are taking integers we can use this next int uh, function that's already there and for num2 I want to do something similar so this is num2 and num2 when you're copying and pasting remember to uh, make the necessary changes now let's try this and see this will always ask me to enter new values so when it's asking me to enter something I have to click down here click and give it focus and enter the value so let's enter 4 and 5 enter all right so that's saying num2 is larger it's working as expected now we don't need to uh, change the code all we need to do is run the program every time you want to do something different let's try 7 and 3 and there you go so that's a quick demonstration of how uh, uh, if statements work now you will also come across um, variations of this you will see else and uh, sometimes even um, else if so let's see how that takes place so we know that if uh, if num1 is greater than, greater than num2 it will never be um, uh, the other two right it can only be one of these three things so we can say um, else and we can say else and if so we can put the else and if on the same uh, line and I will just make the changes to the code as necessary okay so uh, I will explain this in a second all right so let's see what we have now what I have written here is I'm saying if num1 is greater than num2 then we say num1 is larger and we say else if so else first so if it's not if it's not the first one then we ask another question if num2 is greater than num1 then we do the second one and then if that's also not the case that's what this else is about then it means that num2 is the same as num1 now we didn't need to perform another check here that is one of the benefits here we only needed to perform two checks first we check if the first one is bigger than the second one or if the second one is bigger than the first one and if it's not either of those it has to be um, the two being equal right so uh, this is another way 
to set up your if statements and this is particularly uh, beneficial when you're processing a lot of code uh, inside a loop so um, you don't perform unnecessary checks so let's enter 4 and 6 and it, it's saying num2 is larger that's the uh, so two, uh, sorry 6 was larger than 4 and let's run this again and uh, let's try uh, 5 and 5 it will say num1 equals num2 so when you said 5 and 5 uh, it would have checked okay is num1 greater than num2 nope then is num2 greater than num1 no and then automatically it will say okay it must be num1 equals num2 which is what was printed here so another little thing you might have noticed is how this is saying uh, this is doing this warning here saying uh, there's a resource leak so uh, that's a little thing you should fix up eventually before um, finalizing or you know, being done with our program remember to say uh, the name of the scanner object dot close and that will get rid of all the warnings and it's not really uh, it wasn't critical for uh, getting this program to work but it, it still needed to be fixed alright so that is a demonstration of how various different types of if statements work